this is our team. We have a, a domain expertise in both investments and technology and uh, ESG and sustainability. Uh, Sophie and Jonathan, Eve and I worked together as colleagues at AXA Investment Managers at the Rosenberg Equity Division, which is the quantitative equity group where we dealt with a lot of data, big data. Uh, we built models and quantitative tools to analyze companies and build portfolios. We, for a lot of years, in fully integrated ESG into ESG dimensions, into our portfolios, into our assessments of companies from the early on. So we never had a sort of a non-ESG version, an ESG version. We always felt that those things were material to company analysis. So we've been working together for a while from the investment asset management side. Um, and we've now uh, put our minds together and our skills together and our domain knowledge together to attack the vast amount of information that's out there to help us understand um, uh, companies and the way they are um, working through issues of sustainability and how they're being perceived out there. I mean, I think as you've heard throughout this conference, the big challenge here, there's no shortage of data and that data is just growing exponentially. The number of us that are attacking the analysis of that data isn't growing quite as fast. So there's what we call an intelligence gap here. And one of the goals of this conference has certainly been to find solutions and tools and ways to shrink that intelligence gap. And another way of doing that is another one of the goals of this effort, the integrate effort is to build, and what we heard a lot about during the conference is to find ways to make the data that is reported more structured, more consistent, more transparent. And what we're working on though, is a, another subset of that data, which is a very large subset, which is very unstructured data. So no matter what we do on improving the structured data, there's still a huge component that's unstructured. Some estimates put that data as about 80% of all relevant information. And mostly comes in the format of documents, news, social media posts, customer reviews, employee reviews, NGO reports, industry research, all this unstructured text and language data is really what we're focused on and what we're trying to understand. What we have to do when we were faced with that much information is use machines to help us with that effort. So artificial intelligence and particularly natural language processing helps one underneath it to um, identify trends, to look for emerging issues or crises or a company's reputational risks that might be being sourced or being uh, identified through various news and documents out there. And also, as we heard yesterday too, about the importance of both reputation and purpose to improve your brand image, uh, you can also pick up signals and information on a company's brand um, brand image there and companies can use this information to kind of understand where they're standing and help protect or improve that brand. The way it works in practice is a variety of technological solutions because there's only one way to do all this and that's through harnessing the power of technology and it starts at the bottom with extracting data, all this unstructured data, the various news sources. We have uh, a feeds that get us uh, information from about 37,000 different publications. Uh, we get hundreds and process hundreds of thousands of these documents uh, in real time during each day. And then we map those data and that information to companies. That's that first line of processing where we process that data, bring it in, collect it, map it to companies, map it to industries, map it to countries. And then we connect it further in the AI engine to events so various events that are picked up in the news and also to categories like sustainability categories from the SASB or SGGs or other customized categories and then deliver it all through a front end, a SaaS platform front end or customized kind of enterprise version APIs and direct data feeds to companies. The real idea though is to come up with uh, a sense of what's going on from this kind of crowdsource unstructured data that companies can use to assess how they're doing, how their competitors are doing, and what's going on with trends and various dimensions. And importantly, our first application of it is within the sustainability world. Um, I'm going to next 
turn it to Eve, who's going to show us the, or get into our tool and kind of demo it. It's called Iceberg. Tensorial is the name of the company, and Iceberg's the name of the first generation tool. Uh, I'm, I was heartened to hear some references to Iceberg yesterday in a discussion of tangible versus intangible assets in valuation of companies and the valuation of companies and the idea that a lot of the value of companies are in these intangible assets not reported on financial statements, not seen above the waterline necessarily. And there's a lot of information when you go to value a company that's kind of below the surface of the water, below, you know, that's not seen like an iceberg. And we're doing the same kind of thing. There's a lot of information out there. What we're trying to do is bring more of that information up above the surface. So that's, that, that's the name. I'm going to stop sharing now and let Eve share his screen and um, take us through the tool. All right. Can you see the screen? Um, yes. All right. So this is our tool. This is called Iceberg, as uh, Steve mentioned. And uh, first of all, what we want to do with our screen is to uh, select a watch list, which is a list of companies that uh, users are interested in. <clears throat> and uh, as you can see from the left, uh, you have filters uh, to select uh, the list of companies you're interested in. And uh, we are a global company, uh, which means also we look at uh, companies all over the world from every country. So you can select a country that you're interested in uh, for, and you get the list of companies that you uh, want in that country. Uh, for now, we're looking at about 100,000 companies, uh, but uh, we can scale that up to uh, potentially a million companies. So uh, we can also, if you prefer to select companies in a given industry, and again, we look at all the industries, uh, so we're in, in industry agnostic. And you will get for a given industry all the companies that belong to these uh, industries. Uh, this is what's called the gigs industries. Or you can go by size. And again, uh, we look at the very large company or very small companies. Uh, so uh, we're also agnostic to size. And we're also agnostic to status. Uh, we look at public or private companies. Uh, private companies are especially useful for supply chain. So you can do that in the filters. And uh, for this uh, demonstration, uh, once you select the companies uh, that you're interested in, you select the button here that says, I want to follow that company. And for this uh, talk, I'm going to select uh, PepsiCo as one of the companies we're interested in. So once you select that company, maybe later I will show Pfizer uh, to show that uh, this tool is in real time. So uh, the, the tool I'm showing you now, the news that we get uh, and the, the articles I can show you now, were not the same 10 minutes ago and will not be the same 10 minutes from now, especially with what's going on with uh, Pfizer. But for PepsiCo, once you select a company, you go to the news feed and you say, okay, I wanna look at what's going on with uh, PepsiCo. And then within that, you see all the news and all the events, we call them events, uh, that are related to PepsiCo. And then uh, we have what's called frameworks. We have the business framework, the environment framework, and the social framework. And you say, okay, I want to look at the business framework, and I want, I want to see what's going on with PepsiCo and COVID-19. So there's quite a few things going on. And for some reason, um, lately, um, PepsiCo has been uh, using uh, or talking about uh, mentioning an interest in alcohol beverages. So uh, why is that? Well, we can see that um, there is a relationship here between what, for some reason, between what PepsiCo is trying to do with alcohol beverages and COVID-19. And we detected two events in that direction. Uh, they are both, both about one month old. And this is what happens now I have to explain to you what, what an event is. It's an NLP, Natural Language Processing Techniques, to, to in some sense relate in a semantic sense of what these articles are about. So when I click on this, um, this first list here, I get the uh, articles related to that 
topics, which is in this case COVID-19. And uh, you see in here the content of what we call the centroid of this event that shows the news related to PepsiCo and COVID-19. But I can also go to related articles, which is the clusters of these events that are related. And by going through this cluster, I can see why there is a relationship between what PepsiCo is doing with alcohol and COVID-19. So then we can uh, click on any of these real events within this set of articles, and I can enter the details. So that's an example of an investigation we can do on the COVID-19 side for every company in the world. Now, to show you another example, uh, we can go inside the environmental side of things, and we can see well, what's going on with PepsiCo and energy management. Well, I find a number of articles here, and uh, we can see, for example, uh, the second list, which is also uh, a set of articles, a cluster of articles that relate to what PepsiCo is doing with energy management. And here I see, uh, the, again, the center of this uh, event, but I can see all the articles related to energy management. And I, you can see the list of them, and there is quite a few. And for each of them, you can see the source of these articles. These sources are also global. They come from every country. And each of them may have a different view of the meaning of what PepsiCo is trying to do, to do with energy management, which is basically to uh, go uh, to, to power operation with renewable energy. And you can see the interpretation of what it means within these articles. And this one, for example, is beverage technology and market. So it's, a, again, a professional premium publication. But they give their own point of view about what PepsiCo can do with renewable energy. Um, I would take another example here, go into the social framework. And we can say, well, I want to see what PepsiCo is doing, say, with employee engagement, diversity, and inclusion. And again, we'll find um, a number of articles here, a number of events, and um, most of them are like two or three weeks old. And I can select this one, for example, and you will see that uh, PepsiCo is about to invest or invested $170 million in the Hispanic business uh, to promote diversity. Um, and again, we can go inside of these events and go to related articles. And we can see, for example, uh, this article published by Industrial Baking and Snacks. And we can see that PepsiCo is also not doing this big investment, but is trying to do uh, things that are more local, in this case, uh, to, uh, to change barriers in Chicago's racial and ethnic wealth equality. And that's uh, going on right now. And you can, see, uh, you can see the details about what PepsiCo is doing. You can see also the highlight of these articles. Um, and how much uh, PepsiCo is investing. So that's uh, what we detect with the work. Now, what we can do also from this, uh, of course, we can select any, any of these categories uh, and we can go into the details of uh, PepsiCo. And we click on this and we can select uh, again, either Pfizer or PepsiCo. And with PepsiCo, what we see here actually is the time series of events that happened with PepsiCo over the last uh, month or so uh, for now, but we have data that it's, uh, for, we have about 14 years of data. So we can see the evolution of these news. Uh, we can select our game. We can see basically the statistics of these events. Uh, we can see that um, uh, the number of articles, we can see the changes over time. And we can see the peaks, so we can go into the time dimension and say, I want to zoom in on this and I want to see what happened in that day. And we can see all the articles related to PepsiCo on that date. I can also enter, um, uh, for example, a competitor, I can enter Coca-Cola and I can enter COVID-19. And potentially here, I will see all the comparisons of what PepsiCo and Coca-Cola are doing for COVID-19 over the last month or any period that we want. So that's the basic uh, functionality that I want to show you. Um, and I'm gonna stop sharing and pass the, the, the microphone back to Steve. Yeah.
Uh, we can bring Brad in too and can let people ask questions. You can sort of see the the tool, the use, the you know what we envision it being used for, and what we are, are um, targeting at is you know companies that want to understand their own initiatives along these dimensions and how that's being picked up in the in the press and reports and documents, how their competitors are doing along those dimensions, what kind of trends along these topics are are happening. And then also, um, you know, maybe they want to look at their supply chain. They can put their own companies in their, their supply chain, see how they're scoring, or see how the world is talking about them um, through these various sources. So we'll pause, let, let some people ask some questions. <laughs> okay. So first of all, thank you, Eve and, and Stephen. Great um, overview. And it's obviously this is a powerful tool. I mean, it's not humanly possible, obviously, to parse through the amount of media and the types of sources and of information that your platform can do at any given day. And as you said, you know, it can change, particularly if you're in a heavy news cycle like a Pfizer, um, mm -hmm. that's probably changing by the moment as, as more is written about their, you know, their vaccine and the potential impact. Um, I think one of the challenges that you often see when you look at, you know, across media broadly is that, you know, certain publications, they like to believe, we like to believe that they're taking perhaps an objective um, stance and showing all sides of an issue. Um, but we know, I think, in reality, that that's not necessarily the case. And and some news sources have uh, a very sort of persistent point of view. And I was wondering if either of you could talk about your platform may take that into consideration, or uh, you know, how that how do you track a potential bias in a position from a particular source, and how that might get reflected in the analysis. Yeah, so um, I would say that for now, what we want, you're right that there is probably subjectivity in these publications, although you can see at the few publications I've mentioned, they're very professional. Um, some of them are very professional publications. Some of them may be not as objective. For now, we mostly leave it to the user to decide which um, publication they're interested in and the, the publications they're not interested in for any reason. Um, we are thinking of doing some kind of a, if you want some, some sentiment indicator about the objectivity or subjectivity of sources. But we're being very careful with that because we don't want to add our own bias to existing biases. It's difficult to, to suppress the bias and not to add your own bias. So we're exactly. being very careful with that. So we want to give maximum power to the user to decide what is the bias or not. And, and one thing for, to help with that power is to be able to see by types of source, maybe categories of types of source, how that information is collecting uh, so that you can you can kind of see if there are differences of how different types of sources are, are reporting that. So that's just a matter of categorizing by source as opposed to excluding or kind of doing a, a, a warning flag on this source versus another source. So, Stephen, so sort of following along that that line, um, obviously you have already built a number of categories uh, that your your platform already has in place. Are you considering adding other categories from other frameworks and and that kind of thing? Could you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah. So we have first started out like a lot of folks did with the SASB type frameworks, adding SDG frameworks. Just being at this Integrate conference, there's probably about seven more frameworks that I now have on the to-do on our to-do list. Um, there, so there's a lot of frameworks, and as as Bob mentioned most recently, you can collapse a lot of those frameworks into certain categories. So that whole idea of not overwhelming but capturing all the nuances of different frameworks and different um, taxonomies is important. Um, so that that's that is definitely work there. The other component that Eve showed at the start was sort of business dimensions, so sort of corporate result type mm -hmm. of dimensions. It's a little different than and needs to be, and, and the part of this conference also is connecting up those worlds of the sustainability frameworks with the corporate results dimension. So at the same time, we're building out that set too. It's part of the whole. NLP AI effort is it's not just searching on keywords, but it's sort of intelligently with your domain knowledge. What are the words and the ways those those frameworks and those goals and topics show up in these text yeah. documents and sort of building the way that the the engines can kind of look across those 
document and find and cluster these things is really where the AI comes into play. So would, in, in, oh, sorry, go ahead, Eve. Yeah, I, I would add also that the, the technology behind it is very flexible. And currently these frameworks can also be industry specific. And we're currently working with a, um, a transportation, for example, industry. And we're building a framework that, that's specific to this industry, what they're interested in. And we can add it to a framework and categories. Mm -hmm. Great. So in terms of, I know Stephen and Eve, you both mentioned that obviously you're scanning, I want to say, I think it's 500,000 or more sources of information a day. Um, I know you mentioned obviously news events and there's a wide variety of things that are passed over uh, those news sources today. Can you kind of give a sense of some of the other sources like social media and things that you might be that your engines might be scraping or the other kinds of sentiment that you're measuring in the market sure eve you want to talk about that yeah uh we 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 started with um a, a major source of, i would say a no source aggregator that's called um navia and we're looking at about twenty seven thousand different types of sources of publications um we consider that um these sources are premium they give you good information they're better than the social media in a way they are more uh, they go deeper in, into any topic but we will we're on the process of integrated social media and uh, rss from google so that will also come up so we're increasing our, our sources as, as we speak it's being tested the, right now <laughs> what what eve called rss from google is sort of the google universe of documents which is a lot and okay. in multiple multiple languages so that's the the other work which is to uh, map to languages right now we can do all what eve showed in english can be done in french too because half our team is in paris half our team is in the bay area san francisco so those are the two languages at first but the underlying sources now are in multi-languages mm -hmm. and then who would you say are your i to me i see a, a couple of different potential users in companies for your your tool but I, I wanted to kind of get a sense from you, you know, is it is it targeting a very specific type of user or give us a sense of who your, your audiences are? Yeah, I think, you know, um, the, the on the sustainability dimensions, the, the sort of the CSO, uh, hopefully pushing that up to the CFO, the way you guys have been, we have all been talking about the last three days. Um, you know, people within that sustainability efforts department or group that are, trying to show how these initiatives they're doing are being reflected in the outside world there. So picking up some of that information, look, we're doing, we're, what we just did is resonating, it's showing up in these various sources, or here's what our competitors are doing on these dimensions. Maybe we're lagging behind on this certain trend. So that kind of in the corporate world, I would say communications firms also, uh, sort of PR firms that work for these corporations that want to understand how, how is my company being perceived out, out there? Can I, can I kind of get a set of um, news doc and documents that, that are related to various topics for this company? Um, certainly kind of regulators and, and, and folks that want to monitor companies, investors too. I know when we were uh, managing money at, at uh, AXA, we often wanted to have stories to tell about the companies that were in our portfolios, good stories on the ESG dimensions, or we wanted to know about bad stories yeah. that were yeah. that were coming up as well. So um, investors and then the asset owners who want another dimension to kind of bring their portfolios um, score, if you will, to light in a way that's not just the metrics that we've been talking about a lot in the last couple of days, but also in a more sort of um, uh, narrative driven version. Mm -hmm.